Yes, please. We got this is the one here. that weaponized, not me. She weaponized. I probably took a bullet to the head because of the things that they say about me. They talk about democracy. I'm a threat to democracy. They're the threat to democracy President with a fake Trump. Russia, Russia, Russia investigation we do a lot that went nowhere. We and I don't understand why it's so difficult for the press to have a consistent narrative about how dangerous uh, Trump is. Uh, you know, the late great uh, journalist Harry Evans, uh, you know, one time uh, said that, uh, you know, journalists uh, should, you know, really try to achieve objectivity. And by that, he said, I mean, they should cover the object. Well, the object in this case is Donald Trump. Uh, his demagoguery, his uh, danger to our country and the world, and stick with it. But I also think there are Americans who are uh, engaged in uh, this kind of propaganda. Uh, and whether they should be civilly or even in some cases criminally charged uh, is something that would be a better deterrence. But, but the rhetoric is on both sides. It's, it's coming from the right, the rhetoric, it's coming from the, the left. The rhetoric, they have tried to kill this man twice, okay? He, he got shot in the ear, and this guy was sitting up shop outside of a golf course to try to kill him this weekend. And I know, it, I know after something like this happens, it's very fashionable to, you know, talk about rhetoric on both sides. Donald Trump is the target, okay? He's the current target, and it's happening, and it's happened again. And I just, uh, honestly, we, we have to have a conversation about elections. If you lose an election... The country's not going to come to an end, okay? What I want Democrats to do, honestly, is to say, it's okay. Like, if, if Donald Trump wins, democracy will not end. The Constitution will not end. We're not going to live in a dictatorship. There will not be a bloodbath. All the things they say that are totally fabricated to me, it would be a good day to stop doing that. The most important thing that could possibly happen, in my opinion, is for everybody to agree, especially Democrats, that the country is not going to be irreparably damaged if Democrats lose that where constitution is not going to go away, democracy is not going to come to an end, there will be no bloodbath, there will be no dictatorship on day one, which they all say all day long on this network and others. If, if everyone could just agree that that kind of hyperbolic statement will not take place anymore and that it's not been true every time it's been said, that would be a step in the right direction. I'm kind of getting tired of the media keep vindicating what I'm trying to say about them, right? As you saw from the intro, Hillary Clinton came out and said, Trump is dangerous just one day after his second assassination attempt suggests suggest charging Americans for spreading propaganda or as they like to say, uh, misinformation. Now, on this video, I want to take the angle of that the Democrats weaponize misinformation for propaganda. They like to label things as inconvenient to their narrative as misinformation, disinformation. And you saw in the intro that one of the clips I showed you, Hillary Clinton was saying that, oh, there should be a deterrent. There should be fines for saying misinformation. And I, it, they don't want this because at the end of the day... Democrats always want special treatment. I'm going to stand on this point because they spread misinformation, disinformation, and they're always giving a slap on the wrist. For years, and you saw from the intro with Donald Trump, he talked about how he was put at danger because of the fact that they spread this Russia hoax that, oh, he was a Russian asset, which was misinformation, right, Hillary Clinton? So your butt should be fined $100,000 or you should be going to jail for misinformation, but you don't live by the same rules. It's rules for thee, but not for me. And this is the game that Democrats like to play. They want everyone in society to play by a certain uh, rules while they are up, uh, while they are themselves are above the rules. The mainstream media is a propaganda tool of the Democratic Party. No truer statement has been made. Find me evidence that suggests otherwise. When only 3.4% of U.S. journalists are registered Republicans, there's a 33% gap between registered Republicans and registered Democrats in in the the uh, sorry in the politics of the journalists when journalists vastly majority of them donate to the Democratic Party how is this not a conflict of interest but you're de but you're saying that Republicans are the ones spreading misinformation when Trump tried to talk about this and highlight the fact that he he believes that Democrats rhetoric inspired the the the, the attempts at his life the, the 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 ABC moderators wanted to move on look at Donald Trump's got the receipts. You can pause this video if you want. But Donald Trump has the receipts here. But misinformation, disinformation. Oh, oh, the right is responsible for political violence. What liars the Democrats are. And I want to show you why they use it. Because uh, breaking, breaking at the time of me making this video, 
the Ohio bombing was found to be untrue. And many people in the media pointed that this was the reason. Remember, they were shifting, bl- they were shifting away from Donald Trump's second assassination attempt and try to say that Donald Trump's rhetoric caused bomb threats at these hospitals. And that was found out to be a lie. Let's take a look. At least 33 separate uh, bomb threats, each one of which uh, has been uh, responded to, and each one of whom has been found uh, as a hoax. So 33 uh, threats, 33 hoax. I want to make that very, very clear. None of these had any validity uh, at all. Uh, We know uh, that people are very, very uh, concerned. Uh, And we have taken some actions, and uh, in a moment I'll let uh, Andy Wilson go into more detail. Uh, but we've moved resources uh, into, into Springfield. So I want to say to the parents in Springfield, uh, these hoaxes, have, these, these threats uh, have all been hoaxes. None of them have panned out. Uh, we have people, uh, unfortunately, overseas uh, who are taking these actions. Uh, some of them are coming from one particular country. Um, we think that this is, uh, you know, one more opportunity to mess with the United States, and they're, they're continuing to do that. So we cannot let the bad guys win. Uh, our schools must remain open. How embarrassing for CNN. How embarrassing for D- uh, Dana Bush, or Bash, sorry. I did a video how I say J.D. Vance embarrassed the legacy media. I believe that. And this coming out because Dana Bash used this as a point of attack against J.D. Vance for making these statements that he did about the Springfield, Ohio stuff and how she tried to tie him to what's going on with the bomb threats over there. And all this was found out to be overseas people meddling, uh, creating perception. But it's automatically assumed that it was the right wingers, it's these dang conservatives and their threatening messaging. When I already made the point in previous videos how the left enables political violence. And it's so baffling to me how we have all been kind of conditioned to automatically assume a conservative or right-wing person is involved with anything bad or violent that happens in this country when there's more instances of violence, riots, property destruction, all that comes from the left. BLM had more property damage than January 6th. More people died in BLM than January 6th. But for some reason, we always have to, we're always forced to remember January 6th. Does it, hmm, does it have anything to do with the fact that the journal, the U.S. journalists overwhelmingly donate to the Democratic Party and they want to cover narratives, create narratives, which you saw Hillary Clinton mention? Oh, the media should be creating narratives that exposes the object that is Donald Trump, a.k.a. in code. Hillary Clinton wants the media to create a narrative, create a perception around Donald Trump so everyone perceives Donald Trump a certain, in a certain light. And this is what the media has been doing. You don't believe me? Here's another clip that I found online that highlights exactly why the Democrats weaponized misinformation. Because this is misinformation. Calling Trump Hitler is misinformation. Calling his supporters Nazis is misinformation. Calling them extremists is misinformation. Because at the end of the day, how are you going to call half the country extremists? Make it make sense. Extremists are like 5%, 10% of a society. But half of the the U.S. voted for Donald Trump and you want to call all of them extremists? Make it make sense. Russia, 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 that was a hoax. The bomb threat in Springfield, Ohio, hoax. But you push it as if it was the truth. When you had no validity, you had no evidence to suggest that Donald Trump's rhetoric had anything to do with the Springfield, Ohio, which is something I made the point of in my J.D. Vance battles and embarrasses the legacy media. See, this is what happens when you think for yourself. This is why the left doesn't like critical thinking. You don't believe me? Look up, look up why critical thinking is dangerous. Why doing your own research is dangerous. You're gonna see a bunch of left-wing article like Slate, Vogue, telling you, oh, Vox, sorry, telling you that doing your own research can lead to misinformation. See how the Democrats weaponize it, and you wonder why people like me don't trust the mainstream media. Let's check out this clip of how a man realizes the game that the media play, and I will use this as an example of why you shouldn't believe them either. Let's take a look. See that up there? The media made me hate Donald Trump last time, this time I know better. I think that's the sentiment that a lot of people have coming into this election. They have seen what happened during that debate when basically it was three against one. 
They have seen the studies that show that 84% of the media coverage for Ms. Harris has been positive and 89% of the coverage for Mr. Trump has been negative. They realize that the mainstream media is nothing more than a PR firm for the Democratic Party, the propaganda arm of the Democratic Party. They realize, what's, they realize what's going on and they're no longer going to accept it. One thing about Americans, they do not like unfairness. They do not, do not like people being treated unfairly. And clearly Trump has been treated unfairly by the mainstream press. It's my belief that many independents and many undecideds are going to lean towards Trump in this upcoming election. Particularly when you consider the fact that they we're doing much better economically during his four years of an administration when you compare it to Biden's four years. These campus lectures are a prime example of left-wing political violence. When students invite a conservative public figure to speak on campus, university officials regularly disinvite us, citing vague safety concerns. And who is threatening anyone's safety? It isn't the conservative speakers. It isn't the conservative students. It is the leftists. The administrators have a point when they cite those safety concerns because the leftists on campus are frequently violent. In 2017, leftist students sent a female professor to the hospital with a concussion because she had the audacity to share the stage with a respected, albeit right-wing, social scientist, Charles Murray. Last year, leftists at San Francisco State physically assaulted Riley Gaines for saying that men and women are different. Riley was secured in a safe room before the mob was dispersed so they wouldn't attack her more than they already had. I myself was attacked at the University of Missouri, Kansas City back in 2019. Just last year, leftists at the University of Pittsburgh lit a street on fire, burned me in effigy, and threw an explosive at a building as I walked on stage. Political violence is a left-wing phenomenon in America. It is encouraged and carried out by leftists, some of whom have been bailed out of jail by the current Democrat nominee for president, Kamala Harris, whose despicable rhetoric continues to justify violence against President Trump and other conservatives. Have I made my point yet? Have I made my point yet? This is Charleston Winston, Democrat, is not lying that uh, J.D. Vance said he's creating stories. Here's a full clip where J.D. Vance explained himself every single time. All Democrats know how to do is lie. This is where she tried to fact check him about, oh, you, your, your rhetoric has caused bomb threats to arrive at the hospital. And this is what the Democrats latch on to. Hey, bigot. This is the Democrats weaponizing the media who they know is in their back pocket, who, who they know donates them. Have, like, to me. If you find an institution, vastly majority of the people in that institution donated to a political party, and they're responsible for fact-checking, questioning, and pretty much uh, informing the American people about that party, which they donate, majority of them donate to, wouldn't that be an obvious conflict of interest? And my job here, and this is one of the reasons why I started this channel in the first place, is I want to highlight and expose this conflict of interest. I don't give a damn if I don't got a million subscribers. I don't give a damn if I only got 4,000 subscribers. I don't give a damn if I only got one subscriber. I want to expose this conflict of interest as much and as often as I can. Because I believe you cannot make an informed vote if you do not know the reality of the institutions that's responsible for distributing knowledge to you. It, it, it's impossible. Here, you got Hillary Clinton calling Trump supporters to be thrown in jail for sharing misinformation. What about hair supporters who lie about uh, who, who gives information, who share misinformation about Donald Trump, how he's tied to Project 2025, even though he constantly denies that? You, can sh you can't show me no association with Donald Trump personally pushing Project 2025 on his webpage, on his official website. Donald Trump has Agenda 47. That is his agenda. But the left, the Democrats, never attack his agenda. They only attack Project 2025 and a, a construct of their own imagination. They, want, they don't call out the misinformation that Hillary, uh, Hillary, uh, Hillary Clinton, Harris supporters spread about abortion brands when Trump has been uh, staunchly opposed to a federal abortion ban. He does not believe in any federal abortion law, whether it's for abortion or against abortion. That is Donald Trump's position. But they continue pushing this misinformation, make it make sense.
You talked talk about the 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 char, the, the, the Charleston town. I forgot the the white supremacist neo Nazi thing. The economic bloodbath lie. Yo, yeah, y'all just want this. This is this is this is where I see. This is what I see. An institution, the U.S. journalists, who donate majority to to the Democratic Party, doesn't fact check the Democratic candidate. Set wants to fact check Trump. Then when you do your own research, you realize the fact check was false. They have no evidence to suggest that that is a lie that Trump, Donald Trump has stated for most of their fact checks anyway. But Harris said a bunch of lies, mistruths, misleading information, and they wait days later after the information has been said unchecked, then they want to start fact checking. You don't see the game, America? You don't see the game? They want to end free speech. Why would someone want to end free speech? Because they don't want people like me telling people who are watching this, whether you agree with me, disagree with me, I don't care. They don't want, you to, they don't want me to show my work and say, hey, look, this is what I'm basing my opinion on. Here. They don't want you to be able to come to your own conclusions. They want to control your conclusions. And this is the job of the media. The New York Gov Democrats are calling for Trump supporters to be put in a re-education camp. They're telling us our future. And you wonder why people call her a communist. Communists believe that the ends justify the means. If they had to lie, cheat, and steal to get their outcome, they will do it. This is why one of the biggest uh, core concepts of socialism is that you cannot be religious. You have to be an atheist to be a socialist. Because they believe that if you're a, if you're a religious socialist, you won't. when the time comes, you won't do what's needed to actually get socialism. This is talked about in a lot of these socialist manifesto, communist manifesto books. And you're surprised that a, a political party who are secular, atheists, are lying, cheating, stealing, using their position of authority to push their worldview on you. You expect them to abide by some moral code, some ethic code? Hell no. That's why I don't trust Democrats. And you see it firsthand with your own eyes. And all I'm doing is trying to highlight that to you. And they're sitting here trying to tell us that they are they are our betters. They're so sit here and inform us. All they do is lie. They lie so it's much. They even, very profoundly did sorry, not do. They lie so much. Even Pierce Morgan has to check them, which is craziness. But this is how they weaponize misinformation for propaganda. They propagandize their own audience, their own voters, to believe a perception, to believe an imagination that they constructed, and they want them to act on it. This is why I said liberals. Sorry, liberals. Sorry, I'm, I'm. I know there's some good liberals out there, but you guys, you want people, you want buy-in from a perception. You don't want to inform people of reality. You construct reality, and you believe your perception is reality. I believe this is the right thing to do. Based on what? Based on your relative position. There's not an objective bone in a lot of these Democrats' body. All they care about is winning. All this is just a political game to them. And you'll see it here. Let's take a look at this clip and then I'll wrap up with my final thoughts. It looks like the Secret Service got it together in ways that they very profoundly did not do the first time see, that I he was don't, in. I don't Africa. agree with that. I think one agent got it together. One agent had the, uh, the sharp eyes and the quick wit, wit to deal with what was going on. But the truth is, if you hadn't spotted the barrel of that rifle peering out of the bush, Trump would now almost certainly be dead because the Secret Service, but, once again, had failed to properly uh, protect the perimeter, which is the problem, which was the same problem with the rally when that, uh, that kid got onto the roof. Well, I would call this actual protection of the perimeter. That Secret Service agent did see it. It was in a sweep before the president came out. Yeah, but the guy... But, but Louis you see, framing. Oh, let's. I, I want you to perceive it this way. But the reality is, no, the perimeter wasn't secure. The guy was sitting there for 12 hours. How are you going to say? It's like someone's been in your house for 12 hours and you say, oh, yeah, I secured the perimeter. And he jumped out at you and I reacted quick enough before you got harmed. And you say, oh, well, at least the perimeter was secure. No, it wasn't. The guy was waiting for us 12 years, for 12 hours right in this spot. And you think that's security? That's not secure to you? Perception isn't reality. And this is the problem with many people on the left, with many Democrats. And they know this about their voters. This is why I say people who vote Democrat, they're more emotional than logical, in my view. I'll hear yours in the comment section. Please, the guy had been there, it turns out, for 12 hours. They found yes, from his cell phone, said... he'd literally been yeah. waiting at the number one vantage point 
where the media go at that golf course to photograph Trump when he plays golf because it gives them, ironically, the cleanest shot. In fact, the only clean shot you can get at that course, apparently. That's where this guy well, waited for 12 hours without anyone from Secret Service doing anything to find him, notwithstanding the fact that every week he's in Florida, Trump plays on that co golf course. And notwithstanding yes, the fact you know, that seven one, weeks one, ago, one last, he got shot in the head. Guy. Ridiculous. And then still talking, still talking. This is the Democrats for you. But, uh, oh, oh, Donald Trump's the liar. Donald Trump's the threat to democracy. Donald Trump is this and that and the third. Make it make sense. And to highlight further my point, you guys know I'm very, uh, I believe climate change is, in, is an exaggerated problem. You guys know my thoughts about this. And this is how I say that the Democrats weaponize misinformation for propaganda. This is misinformation. Oh, my God, the Maldives, they're going to, the, the rising sea levels. Here is, this is, the source is Google's Earth time lapse. And look at the Maldives or whatever this place is. Look, I hate when they put this music. Hold on. All it cares about, all you need to care about is the picture. Look, 1990, 1991. Look, look, look. You see all the other, look. Move, water moving. Still looks the same. 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 We're keeping going. Still looks the same. 2017, look. Oh, wow. It hasn't even moved. Hasn't even moved. But, oh, my God. They're drowning the seas. Rising sea levels. Okay. Can I get some evidence for that? No, I'm just supposed to believe it because all your experts, right, says so. But you never bring in other experts that have another opinion about climate change. Oh, isn't that convenient? This is how censorship is used to control the perception of the masses. And I'm highlighting it out. This is, this is, this is a scary time, but hey, there's some hope. There, there is some hope because I think people are seeing the game. People are seeing it. I, I, I strongly believe people are seeing the game and I am very, I guess, optimistic about it. But I'll continue pressing on. I'll uh, continue giving you my thoughts. I appreciate you guys watching to end the video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.